Hey everybody, d, &D Scott's here, welcome back to the channel. So for those who've known me for quite a while, or if you follow me on my Twitter, link in the description, you may know about this thing. This is my custom parkour sheds. Uh, it was used for a series that's since been scrapped a long time ago. But I've seen a lot of people really enjoyed it, so I decided why not to pay back all that good reception I've been seeing, and also to finally put it to use for something, by doing a tutorial on how I made the sheds and how you can make your own. I'll also be doing one about my Timus station setup that'll be coming online somewhere soon. But before we begin, I have a few small things that I need to note real quick. For one, I did not do this on my own. Uh, I had a lot of help from my mom of the overall design process and the painting. This amazing brickwork was done by her. Um, now before y'all start being like, oh, it's so nerdy that you got help from your mom on a project. I don't care, man. This was my first ever custom building. I needed the help. Uh, she's been an amazing help. Thank you so much. I doubt you're going to be watching this video, mom, but I love you anyways. And another thing, um, uh, making this tutorial was sort of like a last minute thing I thought of doing back in like March 2020 when I first made this. So apologies in advance if there aren't as many like photos and videos uh, as like evidence and diagrams towards how I'm making all this stuff. Uh, I'll try to be as descriptive as possible, but if it's still confusing and unclear to you, you can always ask me any questions down below in the comments or on my, uh, on my Twitter DMs. Um, I'll try to answer you as best as I possibly can, but remember I made this like two years ago, so I'll try my best to, you know, rack my brain for any of the uh, answers to your question that you have. Now, as you can see here, while the sheds were originally intended to be in take-along and take-and-play scale, they can actually fit with other merchandise ranges within that same size range, such as Trackmaster, Bachman, and Wind Railway. Uh, all within reason, of course, you can't do stuff like minis or like, um, departing now. You can, you know, resize it if you'd like, but if you follow this tutorial as it goes, you should be able to fit, um, any of these merch ranges, not just, um, take and play. So, um, you're not very limited on that. And also, I just want to say, it is, I have taken a few creative liberties on these sheds. As you can see, like, the windows are patched in, they're not, uh, actual holes, and also, the back of the sheds do not have um, their birth holes in them, uh, just because if you actually did that, it would actually make it too flimsy, supposedly. You can if you want to, if you want to take that risk, but I wouldn't personally, because even though it would make it more accurate, I think it's, um, it's going to warp more and um, probably fall apart faster. So uh, just be careful with that. Um, now, without further ado, uh, let's finally get into how I made the sheds. So, if you want to make the Farquhar sheds in the D&D Scott style, here's a little visual list of what materials you're going to need. First of all, you need a computer, a phone, or whatever you can use to access the Thomas Wiki, a pencil and paper, your largest engine in whatever scale you're using, for me it was my take and play Toby, and a single piece of straight track in that same scale, a ton, and I mean a ton, of cardboard and popsicle sticks. Cardboard makes up like 90% of this building, and the other 10% is made out of popsicle sticks for all the roof shingles. Um, you can, you can find all the popsicle sticks pretty cheap at like Walmart, I'd say, but you can get them basically anywhere, so it shouldn't be that hard to find, hopefully. Um, a pair of scissors, pliers, hot glue gun, a ruler, a sharpie, a box cutter and a cutting board, sandpaper, as well as some wood putty. Uh, we use DAP plastic wood natural color personally, but you can just use whatever color looks the most like your cardboard. It needs to look as equally like shaded as the cardboard or else it's going to stand out when you try to paint over it. As well as a bottle of primer, we use Gesso brand. And you're gonna need um, acrylic prints. It doesn't matter what brand, as long as it's acrylic. But for us, we use the colors we use were natural gray, crimson red, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, metallic white, burnt umber, and black. So uh, make it that what you will. And now we can finally get to how I made it. All right. So the first thing we're gonna want to do is draw a nice rough outline of how big we want each bird to be just so we can sort of get a feel for how we want it to look, and also as an eventual template for when we start cutting out the cardboard. 
Alright, so since I didn't get enough footage for this video, as I already stated, here's just a quick little demonstration on what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, you're gonna take your tallest engine and that single piece of straight track, and then with a ruler, you're gonna start designing the um, measurements for how big you want your shed berth. Uh, if you need the exact measurements of mine, uh, I have them on screen right now, uh, but you can resize them however they should fit your models. Um, so when you're sketching out the walls here, you need a little bit of extra space in between the engine and the wall so that you have extra wiggle room in case, you know, for example, you have, um, you didn't put the track in properly or if you get wider or taller engines in the future. Um, and also just because it makes it look more accurate, um, especially if you're ballasting too because you got that extra room for that. Sorry, I'll stop rambling. Um, so then you're gonna need to draw the roof. Obviously you need to do, do this more exact than I am now, but you know, this is just a quick example. Once again, get that extra room, and then, you know, just do this other side, and um, I'll show you on the screen right now what the final product is supposed to look like. And your final product should look a little something like this. Now with one berth done, we're gonna cut it out, and then if you'd like, stand it up next to your engine, see how it fits. If it's too big, too small, just go back to the drawing board and start over on that. Shouldn't be too hard. Now we're gonna use that cutout as a stencil to draw the base for all three of the shed berths combined, or basically the entire front side of the shed. So, I don't have video footage for it once again, but it's pretty simple, just draw the outline of that berth three times combined, and here's what it should look like with the final product. Now to make your two sidewalls, you're going to need that single piece of straight track again, measure out how long that is, for me it was about six and a half inches with this piece of take and track, um, and then that should give or take be how long you want your stencil for your sidewalls to be, and in turn how deep you want your shed to go. Um, as for how tall you want it to be, just make sure on the front stencil, line it up to where the roof meets the um, regular wall side of that, and that should be how long you want it so it will fit nice and snug together. And lastly, to make our back wall template, you're going to take that same template you made with your front wall and simply sketch that out one more time, but without making any of the arches, unless your model is using the arches in the back. Uh, up to you for that one. Now that we have all of our templates for our base building cut out, we can now get to the cardboard. So you're going to take your templates, you know, obviously you should have more than I do, but this is just a rough diagram, and then with your sharpie, just simply go around the template and draw a nice outline. Obviously you need to be more precise than I am. Um, and. You know, pretend like this is all done now, but once you have all that, we can now get to cutting it out. Alright, now that we can get to cutting, I've drawn another extra little arch as a little example of how we're going to be cutting this out. You're going to take your box cutter and your cutting board, and um, just so you can be safe, you're going to put your cutting board underneath where you're about to cut so that you can cut the board itself and not accidentally cut your cable or wherever you're doing this. So, with the box cutter, you just gotta simply follow along where you've drawn your lines. Obviously you need to do this um, way more slowly and safely than I am, but this is, you know, just an example. And you want to make sure the cut gets all the way through the box to the point where you can feel the board with your knife. And, oh it's being a little stubborn. This should go a lot smoother than what I'm doing right now, but supposedly, then, you should- oh boy. <laughs> this is not going as planned. Pretend like this was a lot smoother, I promise it will be. Um, you'll have your piece cut out. Now, once we have our front, back, and two side pieces, we're gonna glue them all together and make the overall base structure of the parkour sheds. I, once again, don't have video footage of this or the materials to film a new set, so it's pretty simple. Just follow the diagram we have on the screen. If you already know the location, well, you should already know how it's supposed to go together. Just wait for that to dry, and this is what it should look like in the end. This was the final product of just day one for me, and as you can tell, for only like the wrap of day one, it already looks amazing and structurally sound. Uh, 
only a few more bits and bits and pieces of building to go, and then we can get straight into painting and all that extra detail. Now we're gonna move on to making the roof, including using a material that I completely forgot to put on our materials list. You're gonna need a tape measure for this part. So there are six different individual pieces of cardboard that make up the roof, and there might have been an easier way to do it, but you're going to need to individually measure out the length from the front piece of cardboard to the back piece of cardboard, and that will tell you how long you want each piece of cardboard to be. Um, for this, I'm reading about a close to eight inches, but as you can see, um, all six different, these are our templates, all six different templates were different sizes. So you're going to need to cut out um, six different, slightly differently sized pieces to make this. You're just going to follow the same step of making, uh, drawing out the templates and then uh, cutting that out on cardboard and gluing it together. So now that we have all six pieces of our roof slants cut out and glued onto the building, you can now see it has finally taken shape. It is now the shape of Farquhar Sheds, but it doesn't quite look like it just yet. The rest of this tutorial is all gonna be, up, be about the detailing to make it finally look like the Farquhar Sheds from the show. So to make our roof shingles, we're gonna take our popsicle stick and our pliers and right along this line right here where I've already tried to mark out where the circular tip uh, ends and starts to move on to being more straight at the end, we're gonna cut off that rounded tip like so. And then if we get the roof over here, um, we measure it along with, alongside the roof, and where the roof ends, and the popsicle stick keeps going, you're gonna draw a little line, obviously you need to be more precise than I am, and then we're also going to cut along this line as well, oof, that one was a little tough, and then as you can see here, it's not entirely exact in my example, but it should line up perfectly with the edge of your building. So now that you have each individual popsicle stick roof shingle glued on, uh, as you can see it looks a little cracked and broken. This is where our wood putty comes in. There should be instructions on your wood putty bottle that tell you how to apply it, but in case there isn't, simply put some wood putty on your fingers and smooth it onto any surfaces where you see cardboard edges sticking out or uneven popsicle sticks just so it doesn't look as cardboardy and more actual real building like. Uh, as you can see in this diagram here, that column in the middle has been wood puttied as well as the two divots around it and the other two sides have not been. Just to show you the little bit of the difference, this is to um, close some of the gaps and also just to, you know, make it more realistic as I already said. You're going to want to apply it pretty thick first and then take a popsicle stick or a straight edge, something else, you know, pretty flat just to and scrape away any of that excess wood putty just so it's not sticking out and looking all globby. And then you're just going to wait for it to dry for what I think is like a couple of hours, but it depends on what brand you're using. And once you are dry, you're going to need to sandpaper all of the areas with the wood putty so that it's um, flushed more in before you start painting. Now we can move on to the final step, painting. Now, if you've ever painted before, especially with a custom or even like painting the walls of your house, you know that the essential first step in painting is always to put on a layer of primer to help prep the painting surface. So that's what you're going to do with your uh, Farquhar sheds here. Just lather it all over the building, the roof, all the different walls, just not on the inside, uh, just as that first base coat. There isn't much I can say about this step because it's hard to describe the painting process as a whole and also because my mom helped me out on a lot of this step. But you should know all the colors. I mean, the um, sandstone side is a mixture of like a burnt umber and a yellow ochre, I want to say. I already mentioned it in the um, materials section of the other part of the video. Um, the bricks are all, it's a nice pinkish red layer and then a crimson maroon for all those those extra details and solid gray for the roof shingles 
and darker gray for the, all the windows in the front. You know, you've got your reference images on the Thomas Wiki, you've got all your paint supplies, you can just do whatever you want with it, really. It's your own shed, it doesn't even have to be Farquhar sheds, it can be whatever you want, really. Um, just go nuts with it. Uh, one thing that I would recommend is adding some extra weathering detail, just simply taking that same color that you did for the sandstone and slightly darkening it a bit, and then dabbling it on there at random bits of the sheds, just to give it that more real-life detail and not just a painted piece of cardboard. Uh, as you can see from this diagram here, the shed berth on the right doesn't have weathering, and the one in the middle has the weathering. As you can see the difference, it makes a ton of difference to make it just that extra pop of realism. And then your very own Farquhar Sheds is now complete. And there you have it! That was my little tutorial on how you can make your own Farquhar Sheds. I hope you found it both interesting and it also made sense to you. I hope to see your guys' final complete sheds, if you can DM them to me on your uh, Twitter or something else like that. Um, once again, if you have any questions, you can leave them below or on my Twitter. Uh, and yeah, I think that's all I got today, so see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, Timothy Art Studios, the music editor here, and I just wanted to say that I own one of these things, and let me just say, it is an amazing piece in my collection. It is just phenomenal, I don't know really how to describe it, it's just, it's just so beautiful, and I hope that you can make one of these sheds uh, so you can have the joy that I have. Also, he does not do building commissions. I know someone asked that beforehand, and he does not do that, so he will not make you a building, even if you said that he will pay. So don't ask him that. It's um, He just made it for me because I'm one of his good friends, and that's that. But I hope that you enjoyed the video. Uh, subscribe to my channel, Timothy Art Studios, but definitely subscribe to D&D &D Scots because he is a epic boy and he does epic content. All right, see you.